Amen. All over this building this morning with everything that we say, everything that we sing, every word that goes up, let it be for the glory of the Lord. Why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord right now. Let's give him every praise today. Can we do it? Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise With one accord, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Every With one accord, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise oh. is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Oh. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise oh. is to our God. Every
there's nothing worth more that can ever come close no thing can compare you're all living hope your prayer tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord yes. there's no worth more that could ever come close nothing can compare your eyes
No place I would rather be than in the house of God with saints of like faith worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise today, saints. Once more, lift your hands. Scripture tells us that uh, Jesus was going to pray for a girl that had already died. And uh, he said she's going to be healed because uh, she's only sleeping. And he was laughed to scorn. So what did Jesus do? He put him out of the room. You have no business being in here laughing to scorn the miracle I'm getting ready to do. There's people in this service today that has heartache, health issues, financial problems, psychological problems. And every time you start to believe that God's going to heal and deliver you, the devil begins to laugh at you and put you to scorn and tells you it's not possible for you. Today I'm asking you if you have any situation going on in your life today that the devil's told you you will never overcome it, I want you to put them out of your room today. I want you to close your eyes, church. I know it seems childish, but I want you to visualize whatever is coming against you, and I want you to put them out of your mind right now. You tell them to leave because God Almighty is getting ready to do a miracle in your life today. Hallelujah. These altars are open today. If you're ready for your miracle, if you're ready for your deliverance, if you're ready for your healing, I'm asking you to come up front today and the ministry team will pray for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, have your way today. Hallelujah. Search your heart today. 
Hallelujah. If there's something in your life that you want your victory for, I'm asking you today to come. There's no time like the present. There's no time like right now. God is here to work miracles today. He's here to heal. He's here, hallelujah, to work in your life today, mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, man. 
Sometimes we believe that our chain is a little stronger than someone else's. The devil does lie to us and confuse us and make us think we're in an unwinnable fight. That we have the most obscure of circumstances. But I know that there is not a temptation, the Bible says, that is not common to man. I know that the Lord's already helped somebody through what he's needing to help me through today. Amen. And I want every one of us in this house to get a revelation of the fact that God is able. Simply, he's able. His grace, the scripture says, is sufficient. That's enough. Enough for you, enough for me, enough for whatever circumstance or situation I'm dealing with whatever trial you're going through he's enough amen praise God if you found that to be true in your life I want you to say amen this week I went to Indianapolis my family and I to uh, a music festival there in Indiana Bible College where Logan attends school and just three nights in a row just concerts of the Bible school college and it was their 20th anniversary so they brought back some of their alumni and they sung some of their old songs it was just a trip down memory lane on Thursday night they sung an old not an old something that was sung in 2005 is not old I guess but an old choir song hallelujah anyhow and uh, man I just had myself a little Holy Ghost meltdown right there in my seat thinking about how faithful God's been to my life when I look back today it's almost laughable when I wrestle with something in light of the fact of what he's already done what he's already brought me through what he's already purchased for my life But I get consumed in the moment. That's what we do, right? About what we're dealing with at this moment. And it's so huge and overwhelming. Amen. But I think I need a little more of that. Wait a minute. I'll testify. I think I'll say it again. God's been so good to me. Amen. I wonder in this place today if you could just lift your hands and just thank God for all that he's done for you. I, I know it sounds so cliche-ish, doesn't it? But Man, when you look back and you look now and you look ahead, my goodness, he's brought us a mighty long way. And I'm very convinced that he's not going to drop me today. He's not going to disappoint me today. Whatever it is you and I are dealing with right now, oh, my goodness. He's going to give us the victory. I believe that in Jesus' name. Nothing too big, nothing too hard, nothing too complicated. Hallelujah. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, mighty God. Hallelujah. When I think back of what you've done, when I look all the way back to Calvary and I know that you were wounded for, for me and bruised for me and by your stripes I've been healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, it feels good, doesn't it? To think about the goodness of the Lord. Praise God. I'm glad you're here. I'm thankful for all of our guests that are with us this morning. An honor to have you in church today with us. 
Amen. I just feel discombobulated. I wasn't at church Wednesday night, so I'm out of schedule now. Amen. I appreciate Brother Schuler teaching for me and, and those that stepped up and led the service in my absence. I so appreciate all that. I thank God for faithful people. Amen. Consistent, reliable people. Thank you for all that. I had a great time. I want you to pray for my wife. She's having a bit of an allergic reaction maybe to something she ate a couple day or two ago, but she's not feeling very well, not able to be here this morning. So why don't we pray for Sister Craner right now? Would you help me, Lord, right now? I ask you to minister to her, Lord, to touch her body, to heal her today. Jesus, that you would move in her and just take this this reaction, this allergic reaction that seems like a way and, and just make her body whole right now. It's my prayer. Touch her, Jesus. Her passion is to be in your presence. And I know this is a twofold thing. Her body hurts, but her spirit is aching today because she's not here. And I pray you bless her mightily right now. I pray that prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I, I want to preach to you just something that's on my heart. I apologize to the media folks. There are no notes. There are no slides. There, there's nothing today except just a burden that I'm going to try to transfer today. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33. Matthew 6 and verse number 33. Brother and Sister Kerrigan, we're praying for Tyler and that family. We have been will continue to intensify our efforts we're praying for you all through this whole process God's going to give you strength and God's going to help you amen and I'm going to believe God for a miracle until God tells us to pray for something different amen but I believe in the power the healing power that's in the name of Jesus but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34, my focus, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Jesus gives a, a phenomenal bit of instruction through this entire chapter about stress and anxiety worrying so forth and he instructs us that the best way for us to live our lives is to seek his kingdom first and allow him to worry about all those other details about what we're going to eat and what we're going to wear and where we're going to live how we're going to make it through the daily rigors of life he puts that principle right there in 33 he says you just seek, seek me first and I'll take care of all the rest and then in verse 34, it's like tomorrow takes on its own personality, right? It's like tomorrow becomes somebody and says, I don't want you to worry about tomorrow. Don't you worry about them. Don't worry about tomorrow because, uh, you know, the morrow shall take uh, thought for the things of itself. That word, no thought, that phrase, no thought in the Greek is translated a lot of times as anxious. Don't be anxious, stressed about tomorrow full of anxiety about tomorrow one more scripture in Joshua uh, chapter number 3 and verse number 5 Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5 and Joshua said unto the people sanctify yourselves for tomorrow everybody say tomorrow tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Amen. Amen. I want to preach just for a little bit this morning simply about a borrowed song. A borrowed song. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you so much. Our text basically says to us don't borrow stress about or for tomorrow because tomorrow will have plenty of its own It'll supply it itself. Don't reach into it and borrow anxiety from it. That's good advice, isn't it? That's advice that your psychiatrist would give you. That's advice that your mother would give you. Quit. She'd use a word like fret, though, right? Quit fretting about tomorrow. Uh, 
Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be all right. This concept of borrowing things, borrowing emotions, is, is something that's uh, very common to us as human beings. We're very good at that. We worry about things that never happen, right? We worry about the potential of something that could happen, but never does materialize. But we've invested a lot of gray hairs and wrinkles into things that never really happened because we worry about it. My grandmother invented worrying sometime in the early 20th century, I believe, when she was born. She worries about everything. She passed that down to my sister. It transferred to my wife because my wife worries about everything. Fortunately, she worries about every one of you. She worries about what some dumb thing I might say could offend you. She worries about that all the time. Lots of worry, lots of stress. The Lord said, don't borrow anxiety from tomorrow. It, has, it comes fully equipped with its own dose of anxiety. It'll be all right. But, but we do, we borrow. We borrow emotions to the point where we create realities, perceived realities off of those borrowed anxieties from tomorrow. We do. We, we, we work out some scenario in our mind. We internalize it. We have a fit about it internally. And then we go to social media and we start posting about it. Or we pick up the phone and we start talking about it. We are, we are giving credence, we're giving a voice to, we're, we're putting body parts onto an anxiety, a, a, a myth, a, a, a stress, a something that we borrowed that doesn't even exist. And, and, and we do that constantly. And then we start acting like that it's a reality because if we say it long enough and think it long enough, to us it becomes a reality, right? So we start acting a fool like it's already here. It's already happening. And that's how drama happens in our life, right? It happens all the time. Well, I, I, I know what they're thinking about me. I know what they're saying about me when I'm not looking. And so in our mind, we've already had 20 arguments with that person, right? We've already unloaded on them. We've already crafted our one-liners ready to respond to what we think they might be possibly thinking about us. That's how we do, right? Sad but true. That's how we do it. This borrowing of emotions, anxieties, and negative energies from, from another place is, is a ridiculous concept, but it's, it's a human thing. I do it. You do it. We all do it. Amen. And then there's usually that emphatic point of embarrassment when we come to realize that that never was even so right and like grandma says we were fretting about something that we shouldn't have been even thinking about this concept of borrowing is not one limited only to humanity it it has its roots in 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 the bible amen the lord is is very uh, adamant about this notion of borrowing. Just a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated Easter, the fact that he is risen. And what kind of a tomb was he placed in when he was buried? It was a borrowed, everybody say that out loud, a borrowed tomb, right? It was a borrowed tomb, right? He, 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 he we know that he, he wasn't a man of, of wealth on this earth, and uh, he didn't have a place to lay his head, and he uh, he didn't. He didn't have a. I tell you all the time. Every time I see my father, he wants to know which cemetery I want to be buried at. Back in my hometown, he owns plots and multiple cemeteries all throughout the area there, uh, and he's looking to to unload some of them. And he wants to know specifically which one I want to be buried in. I mean, he's got fifteen or twenty in each at each location. It's incredible. And so every time we go, we come to this same topic of me dying and me being buried. It's a topic I don't want to talk about. But we do it constantly. He's borrowing to worry about tomorrow. But he's trying to plan ahead, I guess, a little bit. But anyway, uh, Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. He wasn't going to need it long term. 
He didn't rent it. He just borrowed it, right? Praise the Lord. I have a neighbor, Brother Jim House. He called me, and in his hour of distress this Friday, I was not available as a good neighbor to him. He had a water overflow issue in his home from a, from a washing machine, and he needed my shop vac. He just wanted to borrow it. I, did you, I hope you didn't go buy one, or I hope you didn't even rent one, because he just needed it for a little while. He just needed to borrow it, but I let him down, and I felt terrible about that. I wasn't even in town. Amen. But we, we, we buy things that we're going to use permanently. We rent things that we're going to use short term. We borrow things that we're just going to need for just a little bit. And Jesus Christ didn't buy a grave. He didn't even uh, lease a grave. He borrowed a tomb because he had every intention and every ounce of prophecy from the beginning all the way up to, to the time of his, his uh, walking on this earth was, and on the third day, the Son of Man is going to rise again, conquering death, hell, and the grave taking the sting out of death, amen? And so he did it. He borrowed that tomb. It, we, we know that, that the Lord is not afraid to ask humanity to borrow things. We know that, that he needed a, a, a platform, a venue to, to speak to the people, to teach and preach from. So he asked Simon Peter, son, can I borrow your boat for just a little bit and push out from the shore and teach to this large crowd? And the Lord was allowed to. Simon very intelligently responded with a yes, you can borrow my boat and use it to teach from. And we know that the Lord accomplished his purpose and then he blessed the one that allowed him to borrow with a great draught of fish that day. The Lord is, is so interested in borrowing my life tonight, this morning, your life this morning. I love it. It was said at the conference this week that he's the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He he could be God all by himself, but he chooses to get us involved. Amen. He wants to be our God. He's God without us, but I am thankful this morning that he chooses to allow me to be a part of it today. Amen. He's the God of you, and he's the God out of me. He said, I'm looking for a people that are not ashamed to be called my people and I'm not going to be ashamed to be called their God. We sing a song sometimes that said, Lord, just don't do it without me. This morning, I am so thankful that the Lord would look at me and say, hey, big guy, can I borrow your voice today? Can I borrow your hands today? Can I borrow your feet today? I can do it all by myself, but I want to be your God. Amen. This morning the Lord is in this place looking for somebody willing to allow him to borrow their life. You can borrow my voice, Lord. You can borrow my life. You can borrow everything about me, God, because I understand that I'll never, you'll never be indebted to me. I'll never let you borrow something that you won't turn around and bless me because of it. In the Old Testament in 1 Kings chapter number 4, there's a story of a, of a lady who uh, uh, was in debt with creditors. Her husband had passed away. The creditors now have decided they're going to collect. And because she has no money to pay off the debt, they are going to take her two sons away from her and turn them and sell them for slaves. That's how it worked in those days. She goes to the prophet and she asks for help. And Elisha says this. He says, what do you have? And she said, all I've got is a pot of oil in the house. He said, well, then that's where we'll start. The miracle will be based in that. Now, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go out to all your neighbors and all your friends, everybody you have any influence with, and I need you to borrow vessels. I need you to borrow pots and pans and things that can contain oil. And so she did that. And she went out and she borrowed. He said, and not just a few. Not just a few. Go out and borrow a bunch. And so she did. She went out and she borrowed and drove people bananas, I'm sure, borrowing their empty vessels. 
And the Lord worked a miracle that day through the prophet as he prayed. And the, the spout of heaven, so to speak, was turned on. And the oil began to flow in that home, filling up this empty vessel and then to this empty vessel and then to this empty vessel. And it kept on flowing until there were no more empty vessels. And the Lord teaches you and I a great lesson. You and I are going to receive the miracle from God. The oil obviously represents the spirit of God, the power, the favor, the authority of God. And he is willing to pour that out into every empty opportunity, into every available vessel, into every space that we will allow him to have access to in our lives. Uh, he put in this principle of borrowing empty places because uh, the miracle needs a vessel to be poured into. Amen. And so you and I understand this morning uh, that if we'll make some place of availability, God will keep on blessing us. But as long as my schedule is full and as long as my mind is full and as long as my heart is full of things that are, that are clouding and, and filling up and junk up the spaces that God wants to operate in my life uh, there's no room for him to pour a miracle into me so it's my job to borrow those empty spaces to borrow those empty places I've got to clean out my schedule and clean out my mind and clean out my heart and get some of that clutter that I've got full up with other things the busyness of my life so that the Lord can have an available empty vessel to pour his glory into Somebody say amen. While we're here, why don't we just challenge ourselves today? I, I'm going to be more available for God than I've ever been in my life. I, I may need to clear out some clutter in my life. There's just no space for God to operate because I've got too many things going on. I'm too busy. I'm too consumed with other avenues in my life. God is looking to give somebody a miracle this morning, but he needs somebody who's willing to borrow some emptiness, some availability, and bring it into their home and say, Lord, Lord, here it is. It's all yours. Fill it up. I'm not going to throw anything else into it. I'm not going to use it for anything else except to receive more of you into my life. The whole concept of borrow. I read a quote this week that, uh, that kind of shook me. It's by Charles Haddon Spurgeon, and it says this. Is there nothing to sing about today? question then borrow a song from tomorrow sing of what is yet to be is there nothing to sing about today then borrow a song from tomorrow sing of what is yet to be sing of what is yet to be give no thought for the morrow he says don't borrow anxiousness, anxiety from tomorrow. We're instructed. But I love the, the, the directive of, uh, uh, of, of Spurgeon when he, he tells us uh, not to be borrowing anxiety from tomorrow. That's not acceptable. But borrowing a song from tomorrow is acceptable. I, I kind of like that thought, don't you? I kind of kind of like to get that in my mind this morning. I need to think about that just, just a little bit. We read a scripture there in Joshua where Joshua is prepping them for what is God is about to do. And, and he, he, he says to them, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now, they are a struggling, fussing, cantankerous little bunch here that he's dealing with. And they have approached the walls of Jericho. And they, they were sold the, the notion that this is a promised land. And I believe through their, through their low level of faith and understanding, they believed that it was just going to be a, a grab bag of blessing. We're just going to walk in there, waltz in there, and uh, we're just going to take everything that we want. That's not 
how it was. It was a promised place of blessing and victory, but it was going to be brought. To have victory, there has to be a battle, right? And to, and, and to possess things, there has to be a taking of it. And so the Lord never promised that there wouldn't be a struggle. He never promised that there would not be a fight. And their doubt actually afflicted them for, for a generation. They've been wandering in the wilderness and struggling with doubt and, and so forth. And now they come to the promised land and the manna dries up and, and the Lord stops all that stuff. And now it's time to go to work and to receive of the Lord. Amen. And so uh, the, the Joshua says, all right, now it's time. Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now is the time. He is answering questions throughout this whole thing. Uh, are, aren't the cities still walled? Uh, are there not still aliens? Are there not still armies among us? Is, uh, or did something happen? Am I missing something here, Joshua? Because you're saying tomorrow is going to be different, but I'm looking at what's happening today and what I see visually today, and it looks like the same old thing is going on today. I love I love, I love this, 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 this attitude of Joshua. He, he, he is such a, a powerful leader. He, he has strength to take a stand when he needs to take a stand. Uh, he, he said, if, if you want to go back to Egypt, go ahead. But as for me and my house, uh, we're going to serve the Lord. And, and, and then he has the, the ability to cast vision in the most bleak of circumstances. When the people are frustrated, when the people are confused, he takes the pulpit uh, and he says, sanctify yourself set yourself apart prepare yourself because tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you this morning I just want to to bring some somebody to a place maybe of a fresh faith maybe a little bit of a of, a, of an encouragement to some of us in this place today who are so stuck in the reality of today and we've even we've even reached into tomorrow and began to worry about what might be what could be what won't be or what can't be I hear the voice of Spurgeon speaking into this uh, uh, this heart of mine this morning when he says uh, if you don't have anything to sing about today I want you to borrow a song from tomorrow I hear Joshua telling the people who are asking him and saying wait a minute the cities are still walled there are still aliens there are still armies we still are in a mess when he says sanctify yourself for tomorrow God's going to do great things among us hear me well in this house this morning you may be going Going through it right now a living hell here on this earth problems in your life problems in your health problems in your marriage problems in your finances yes the cities are still walled yes there are still armies that are fighting you but hear the fresh voice of vision coming through scripture this morning that says get prepared because tomorrow is going to be a blessed and a better day. Today you may have walked in this room and the worship team which so powerfully led us to the throne today was unable to scratch the surface in your psyche. They were not able to get your heart and to lead you into the presence of God because all you see are walled cities and all you see are giants and all you see are the realities and struggles of what's happening on this calendar day in your life if that's you I don't want to I don't want to embarrass you I'm not mocking you I've been that way way too many times more than I would like to admit today but if you are there and you're struggling and you're hurting I'm telling you what the Lord said don't borrow another ounce of stress about tomorrow but what I will let you do I will let you borrow a song of praise from tomorrow you don't have to shout about what's going on right now I'm not asking you to shout about the fact that there is a disease in your body I'm not asking you to lift your hands and worship today because your bank account is empty I'm not asking you to get excited and leave for joy because your home life is messed up but what I would like for you to do is to borrow a song from tomorrow Prepare yourself and start shouting about what God is about to do in your life. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
I believe that'd be a great idea, don't you? I believe it'd be really good for me. I believe it'd be a real blessing for my life if I would just begin to not focus on what's happening right now or not happening right now, but rather to borrow a song of praise about what God is going to do in my life tomorrow. If there's nothing to sing about today, then borrow a song from tomorrow. Sing of what is yet to be. Somebody shout hallelujah. I've come to tell you this morning that what is going on in this house today is not just for those who have overcome, but it's also for the ones who are coming through right now. Amen. We may not have be, we may not be standing on the other side looking back and shouting about it. We may be living through it right now, but sanctify yourself because tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Somebody say amen. A borrowed tomb, borrowed vessels, a borrowed boat. Man, it's, it's, it's how we operate. We live in the kingdom of God in a faith-based economy, don't we? Faith is the currency that we spend. It's how we operate. The Bible tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen, right? It's the substitute. It's what we have until we get that that we're hoped for, that we have hoped for until we get the miracle that we have not yet seen, until we get to the place called heaven that we have not yet seen. We have our faith as the substitute. And the whole notion of faith is really based on borrowing. I am borrowing a belief, a trust, a faith in something that is going to happen. It's a hope that is going to to happen. Amen. The whole concept of being filled with the Holy Spirit of God is it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. I, I am borrowing hope from Him today. I, I, everything about living for God is, is about faith. It's about hope. It's about borrowing those entities. Everything about this life is about borrowing the negative, the stress, the worry, the fight, and the fuss and the struggle from another day and the devil successfully reels it into where we're living right now and it bogs us down and we wonder why we can't sing and we wonder why we've lost our song. We wonder why we can't lift our hands uh, in a natural way without it feeling forced. We wonder why it's so hard to pay our tithes and be faithful to church and all these things. We wonder why we struggle. I'm here to tell you that is exactly why we struggle because not only are we dealing with the reality of the moment but Satan's success Successfully helps us to borrow stress and anxiety from tomorrow and bring it into the, in today. And we are so weighted down, uh, we can't lift our voice and we can't lift our hands. But the remedy for that uh, is God's borrowing system. He says, don't borrow what the devil tells you to borrow, anxiety from tomorrow, but rather borrow a song from tomorrow. Why don't you get excited today, not about what is going on, but about what God is about to accomplish in our Life. Somebody say amen. I can shout today, not because my life is perfect, but because I know that I have hope in Jesus Christ that tomorrow is going to be a greater day. I can lift my voice and sing praises, not because I feel perfect today, but because I know that there is a brighter day coming through the power of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wonder if somebody would like to borrow a song today. I wonder if there's anybody in the room today that understands that this is who we are and this is what we do. And you may walk in this place and wonder, man, these people must have perfect lives. All they do is smile and sing and spit and cry and carry on. No, that's not true. We're all wondering how the bills are going to be paid. We're all wondering, is this sickness going to get the best of me? We're all worried about how our children's future is going to work out. We're all full of real life struggles. The difference is, 
a child of God that is, as the scripture describes us, led by the Spirit. Those are the sons of God that are led by the Spirit of God. We are led to a place of borrow, a place of faith, a place of trust, a place of availability and emptiness for the Lord to pour himself into our lives. Stand with me all over the house if you would this morning. Now listen, I believe that if we can just get a hold of a truth today, this simple truth that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. If you believe that, I want you to say amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is a spirit, right? He's not limited by the laws of, uh, of, of earth like you and I are. Gravity, time, so on and so forth. He's not bound by those. He is an eternal spirit. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we take solace in that for anybody who has ever repented of their sins, you're thankful that the same God you're worshiping today is not bound by time and space. I can't go back and undo the sins that I committed in my life. But this eternal God who is not limited by time has the ability to go back in my life and work a miracle of redemption, mercy, and forgiveness for the man that I was and the sins that I committed. Amen. I'm thankful for that understanding this morning. He's able to wash my sins away, cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. They're as far as the east is from the west. You are looking at an imperfect man, but a forgiven man today. And I can shout it from the rooftops that I am forgiven. And the God that I'm worshiping here today, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if I believe that the God, the eternal spirit that we are worshiping here this morning has the capacity unlimited by time and space to go back and forgive who I was, then I've also got to get excited about another notion that he is able to go forward into my life and as on this day when I praise him and worship him and lift him up and pray to him he is, he is actually doing a work in advance in my life that's why this morning I, I don't want you to just borrow a song from tomorrow so that it's some sort of a therapy for your emotions so that you just kind of get distracted uh, off of your problems today and, and you can just uh, think about the sunshine and the pretty flowers about tomorrow what I'm trying to get us uh, motivated about today is praising the Lord in advance for something that he is doing in our future now I hadn't got there yet I hadn't arrived at that miracle yet I hadn't got to that point in time where the miracle comes where the cancer is healed where the finances are fixed where the marriage is put back together but on this day right here and right now I can borrow a song of redemption for my future and I can shout about something in advance and I can sing about something in advance and I can pray with faith about something in advance if you don't have a song today borrow one for tomorrow Under the Holy Ghost in this place this morning close your eyes all over this room ah, the reality and real life issues you're struggling with right now compounded by the, the fact that Satan successfully reaches in to the, to the future thinkings and forces us to borrow some, some terrible anxiety from another, another place that doesn't even, it's not even reality. He's a roaring lion roaming to and fro. He, he, he's, just, uh, he's just intimidating. He, he just uh, creates scenarios uh, for us to doubt and fear. But in this place today, I just so, I feel so 
passionately about the fact that if we'll praise, if we'll pray, if we'll give it to God today, he's already moving on our tomorrow. I, I, all I'm doing is I'm spending the, the equity, the currency in the kingdom of God. It's called faith. And my faith says I've got hope when trouble comes my way. It's a beautiful hope. God's going to set me free. Trouble don't last always. My God's already purchased it for me at Calvary. I'm not waiting on God to muster up a little more power. I'm not waiting on God to get his, get his priorities in order. I'm not waiting on God to clear his schedule so he can heal me or give me a miracle. God's already done all that. I'm just living through the reality of today, borrowing a song from tomorrow, knowing my God's already worked it on out. Hallelujah. In this house, God wants to minister to you, to me, to every one of us, hurting, struggling, whatever it is we're dealing with today. And, and you don't think, you don't think you can even lift up your eyes and, and look ahead. You don't even know where to turn to because you're so strapped down with the chains of this life. And the borrowed anxieties. But God has brought you into this place to have me just spew out a little cornbread sermonette thought today about a biblical concept, a God concept that it says it's okay for you to borrow a little faith from tomorrow. Borrow a little praise from tomorrow. I know that right now you shouldn't be shouting. But sanctify yourself. Because tomorrow, the Lord, He's, he's about, he's about to, to do great things, do wonders among you. Amen. It's not always going to be like it is today. And it's time for us to invest a little bit of praise and a little bit of prayer and a little bit of surrender. It's time for us to maybe just borrow a song from tomorrow. I wonder if you'd like to come find a place to pray or stand somehow just to, just to lift your life up today and say, Lord, I'm honest with you. It hurts today. But I believe there's hope for my life. I believe, Lord, that you're working on my behalf. I'm praying prayers of faith today that says God is able. God is able to do great things. That my future is so much brighter than my past. I know, yes, there are walled cities. Yes, yes, yes. There are still armies to fight. Yes, it's all still right here around you today. But I'm telling you, sanctify yourself for the, tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. You need to operate your life this morning uh, you need to give your faith and start living uh, based on an understanding uh, that it's not always as it appears today but my God is working on my behalf uh, he's forever making intercession for me uh, he's doing things I have not seen ear hath not heard neither has it entered in the heart of man what God has in store for us so today I want you to borrow some faith from tomorrow, borrow some praise from tomorrow, borrow a prayer, some surrender from tomorrow. Come to this altar right now. As a church family today, they're going to sing. We're coming into the presence of the Lord in a very profound way today. But I'm asking you, I'm asking you to borrow a song. Borrow a song. You may not feel like it today. You may not feel like it today. But you hang in there. God's working it out on your behalf right now. Jesus, Jesus. I may need to borrow a little song. I keep from shouting. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, is there nothing to sing about today? That's okay. Borrow a song from tomorrow. Sing of what is yet to be. Oh, I've got a big picture thinking going on in me today. I'm not limited to this earth. I've got a heaven. I've got a home in glory. I've got so much that is in my future. I've got a lot to sing about today. 
and my life may be a mess right now and I may be going through it right now but that's okay because I know that God is working he's got plans for my life plans to prosper me plans to bless me plans to heal me plans to use me for his glory and so I'm not going to stay stuck here in the stress of today I'm not going to borrow anxiety from tomorrow oh no I'm going to trust in the Lord God's going to work it on out in the troubled times hallelujah First, the kingdom of God. He'll take care of all the rest. I believe it today in Jesus' name. I believe it today in Jesus' name. I believe it today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Time to borrow a little faith from tomorrow. Pray a little prayer. Get toward tomorrow. Sing a little song. Thinking about tomorrow. Hallelujah. Jesus. yesterday, but I don't have to, because I serve a God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, and when I ask him to forgive me today, he's operating in my past. He's forgiving me and washing my sins away. And when I pray today over a need, over a problem, he's working in my future. He's already gone in advance. Oh, I believe that this morning. So I don't have a reason to be sad. I don't have a reason to be low in faith today. If I'll just borrow a song from tomorrow. Hallelujah. Yes. pray for one another, just encourage one another today. We're going to get through it. We're going to make it. We're going to have faith today. Oh, hallelujah. Pray one for another. Ask God to bless your brother, bless your sister. Hallelujah. Jesus, move on them this morning. God, do a great work in their lives today. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I can see with my last breath see We've got to get victory over this today. We've got to get victory over borrowing anxiety from the tomorrow. God gives us permission to borrow things that aren't ours. His power, His name, His glory. He gives us that permission. Matter of fact, He willed it to us. Right? We, we are sons and daughters join heirs with him today he willed that authority to us anything that's his we have access to we just go in faith and and borrow it use it but what is defeating people 
inside and outside of the church is this borrowing of anxiety, doubt, fear, apathy, and lethargy from outside sources in their life. You see, if we lived in vacuums, Brother Morgan, it would be a little easier, wouldn't it? If it was just me, Brother Michael, and the Lord, oh man, I believe we'd be a majority. Everything would be good, wouldn't it? Me and Jesus. That's not how it works. Because you got to put up with me and all my problems. And you got to listen to the whole world and go to work and deal with that. You got so many moving parts in your life, Brother Austin, that we have affecting us. Drawing, borrowing anxiety. You ever worry about your son, your, your daughters? You, you ever worry? You do. You, and what you're doing is you're bringing that to your life. That's natural, dads. We can't help that. We, but, but we're borrowing all kinds of stuff and bringing it into our spirits and weighting us down. And so we are not moving forward in God as we want to. And we're wondering why. I believe, Brother Kerrigan, God wants to give us great victory in this arena right here of what I'm talking about today. This arena of borrowing the wrong thing. We borrow doubt. We borrow fear. We borrow anxiety. We borrow bitterness from other places. If you're mad at them, I guess I ought to be mad at them too. I guess we all ought to just get mad. Well, I, I saw it on Facebook that somebody said and did this, so I guess that... I guess that'll let that affect me. Read Satan's newspaper, Facebook, see what's going on. And let that come into my spirit. Y'all know I am walking on it right now, don't you? And so I sit there in some little drawn up mess of Humanity. God's saying, man, sanctify yourself, son. Get ready to do great things in your life. And all I can say is, oh no. All there are are walled cities and aliens and armies. That's the reality of it. And God's saying to me today, do not live your life based on how it is at this moment but this is a faith based kingdom and you need to exercise that faith and borrow some strength from tomorrow borrow some anointing from tomorrow and let me tell you the positive side of all this of all the negative influences that I borrow from there's a whole lot more positive in my life that's why I love coming to church because I look around and I see overcomers. I see people who, are, who have overcome and people who are overcoming right now. And, bro, and, and Brother Hoffman, I, that, that gets into my spirit and that encourages me and that takes me to, to a better place in God. Amen. That's why the devil wants to isolate us and, and get us unfaithful and get us away from the things of God and, and, and disconnect and just, just so he can absolutely bombard us with all the negative things. But the Lord says, no, that's not how I operate. Iron sharpens iron. Life is in the Word. You've got to allow God to affect you today and get beyond what's happening at this moment and borrow a song from tomorrow. Every hand lifted in this room right now. I speak that victory in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop allowing all the negativity of this life to drag me down and to crush my faith. I'm going to rebuke doubt. I'm going to reject fear. And I'm going to walk with a borrowed song. And I'm going to sing a borrowed song. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw from a well of faith that is maybe not even mine. But I'm going to draw strength and I'm going to overcome. Hallelujah. I speak victory. I speak breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Praise God. Praise God. Feel victory in this place. Feel victory in this house. Victory in my spirit. I believe God's doing a work. I'm going to just borrow a song. Encourage myself and and self in psalm, spiritual song. I'm going to sing about tomorrow. I'm going to sing about heaven. I'm going to sing about grace and mercy. I'm going to sing about, I'm going to quit dwelling on all the anxiety of today and borrowing some more from somewhere else. I'm actually going to make a turn in my life this week and I'm going to sing a borrowed song. Hallelujah. Brother Shooter, I want you to come. I want you to pray over this congregation. Dismiss us with great authority in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for your word today and all that you're doing for us, Lord. We're so thankful that we don't have to face this world alone, Lord, that you are with us every step of every way, Jesus. Lord, I ask that you put hedges of protection around each and every person in this place to God and ask that you allow us to be a witness as we go forward with you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.